Today's Tesla Model 3 video is all about lanes and what impact lanes have on things like autopilot because they have a massive impact. So in this video, we're going to go over when you can and cannot use autopilot, which is heavily based on lanes. And we're also going to be testing lane departure avoidance, which I've not tested yet. But basically what that does is if the car senses that you are drifting into another lane, perhaps, you know, you've nodded off or you're not paying full attention, the car will swing you back into the middle of the lane. So we're going to see if we can get the car to do that today and we're going to film the whole thing. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the car into drive. And if you look at the screen, you can see that beautiful big bus over there which i'm excited oh look wait wait he's gonna slide on past there he goes but yeah you can see that the lanes are showing but they're kind of jiggling about that's because if you actually look at this road there aren't any road markings so you don't see the little dash lines along the middle and because of this autopilot won't actually turn on here so you know when autopilot will turn on because right here a little steering wheel pops up and then that means that you can engage autopilot so we're just gonna drive slowly because dash lines do appear just before the end of this junction so we should see the dash lines appear on there and we should see autopilot allow us to engage if we wanted to so the dash lines are kind of viewable now so you can see they've shown up on the map and there's that little steering wheel that i was on about but we've now hit a junction autopilot can't currently do junctions here in the uk so the little steering wheels disappeared now if we go down here this is another road that doesn't have any dash lines so autopilot will not engage here but once again just at the end of this junction dash lines will appear so autopilot will probably pop up just for a little second and then autopilot should engage straight away here because there's a lot of road markings everywhere so i'm driving along wait for it to pop up it's popped up so that means i can turn on autopilot which you do by just pulling this stick down twice and then that noise symbolizes that autopilot is now on so the steering wheel is moving itself the car is controlling its own speed so what we're going to do is we're going to head onto the motorway we're going to head to the supercharger which is about 20 minutes from where we are at the moment and en route we should be able to test the lane avoidance systems so the area we're in right now has road markings so i can turn on autopilot just like this but around this corner the road markings do actually disappear so what we want to test is will autopilot just turn off when it can no longer see road markings or will it attempt to keep going there is also a sharp corner right here that i'm going to just lower our speed for we're going to lower it down to 30. you lower the speed by just moving this on the wheel because autopilot does have a tendency to take these corners way too quick at the moment so if we go to about 35 that should get us around nice and safely so it did limit our auto steer, but it did continue. That basically just means it's telling you that you need to be ready to take over. That's another EU regulation. Right, this is where the, uh, the road markings disappear. So it's still going, but I'm going to stop because what I've found happens is it pushes you right into the middle of the road because it thinks that this is just one lane, but obviously this is two-way traffic back and forth. And obviously I don't want to be right in the middle of the lane if there's a car just around the corner like that. What I think's odd, and I've seen this in a few videos from other YouTubers and stuff, is that for some reason, autopilot, if it has to pick a side, it tends to pick the right lane, which means you end up on the complete wrong side. You'd think by default in uh, in the UK where you drive on the left, it would keep you on the left. Anyway, we're gonna head back around this road again because it is a really nice, quiet and straight road. There's a big, scary lorry coming, so I'm just gonna shove my car as far onto this corner until he's out the way. I think it's time we attempt the lane avoidance system. So while we're just parking, there's no one here. In autopilot, there is emergency lane departure departure avoidance and if you have that turned on apparently what it should do is if it feels like you're drifting into the wrong lane it automatically moves the car back into the middle now if you have that turned off and you start drifting into another lane apparently what it does is it just makes a kind of a, a warning sound and then it's your responsibility to move yourself back into the middle lane right there is a lorry on the other side obviously i don't want to attempt this at all if there's any cars nearby so we're just going to slow down and as soon as he's gone i might just see if we can let the car start drifting oh and also i meant to mention that apparently this only works when you're going between 40 and 90 miles an hour so we're going 47 at the moment and i'm just gonna let it drift and see what it does no nothing happened so i want to test if this is just something that happens on the motorway or if it will happen on these kind of roads once again i'm drifting and it's not sending me the other way i didn't expect it to to be honest because on these kind of roads you've got little obstacles that you have to go around there could be like a dead pheasant lying about or there might be an old log that's fell over so just to go back to the road markings i think what's really impressive is that right now it can detect the road markings but if you actually look at the road markings they are really really thin so i think it's just impressive that the car can pick that up although you'll see on the little screen that in some areas Areas, it turns into a straight line and it keeps kind of flashing between the dash lines and just like a normal full lane anyway we're driving to the motorway at the moment and Becky and I had a thought because I did go through the manual for all of this lane stuff before recording this but Becky and I were thinking that perhaps it will only push you back into your lane if there's other cars nearby because like I said before there's so many times where you just need to casually pull out a little bit you know what if you want to avoid a puddle something like that so we're heading to the motorway to see if it just works all the time on the motorway but if we can't get it to work 
I think that's probably because it will only push you back into your lane if it can sense that there are other cars that you could be about to get in the way of. And there isn't really any way for us to safely test that, which is the only issue. But when we get on the motorway, we'll also take a look at the automatic lane changing, which I've not successfully done on this channel yet. So even if we can't get this one to work, we should still be able to get something to work. I think we're stuck behind a tractor at the moment. We haven't really gone faster than uh, 15 miles an hour. So this is just a nice opportunity to show off a realistic use for when autopilot's really helpful. And that's in stop and go traffic like this. Because we're averaging about eight miles an hour, the car in the front has just stopped for whatever reason so that you can see that we've slowed down and we're stopping as well. And now I can kind of just relax my feet and know that when we do eventually set off again, the car will just start moving and I don't need to do anything. Here we go, the car should start moving. So I'm not gonna do anything, I'm just gonna, yeah, there we go, and now it's off again and it's keeping a nice safe distance from the car in front. Obviously I should be holding on the steering wheel anyway. And now we're slowing back down again and we just need to wait for it to set back off. Okay, we're approaching the motorway now. It looks to me that it's gonna be way too busy to safely try the lane avoidance stuff, but we should still be able to take a look at the automatic lane changer. A little feature that the car does just do by default, whether in autopilot or not, is that when you merge onto the motorway coming from a ramp, it actually turns the indicator off itself when you've actually gotten onto the lane. I'm assuming other cars probably do that as well, but it, it is just a cool little extra thing. So so we're going to put ourselves into autopilot and you can see that we are currently going 57 miles an hour because of that lorry and this Peugeot in front. So I want to change into this right lane and to do that all I do is indicate and then I nudge the wheel slightly and it moves me over. Oh, but it got scared from that. Oh, that was interesting. Hang on, we'll talk about what happened there in a second. Let's see if we can do a successful lane change. So I've done the same thing again and it has aborted it a second time. Here we go, third time lucky, there's no cars behind this time. So I indicate, I nudge the wheel, and it moves out because there are no cars. And once it's done it, we just carry on as normal. It also does this thing where it slightly increases your acceleration when you pull out, just so that you can overtake slightly easier. So once we get past this lorry, let's see if we can pull back in again with autopilot. So I indicate in, I give the steering wheel a little nudge, and it moves us over. All I did there was I indicated and I nudged the wheel and now it's slowing down because of these cars in front. Here we are again. Tesla vehicle charging. That's down this way. Battery has been preconditioned for supercharging. Wave to the gas guzzling scum on the way past. <laughs> gas guzzling. Oh no. <laughs> nice one. Gas guzzling. I said gas guzzling. Okay, we successfully made it to the supercharger. So let's get on charge and we'll talk about those two failed lane changing attempts and what went wrong there. Uncharged, 25 minutes remaining. I don't think we need to stick around the whole time because we can charge at home anyway. It was just somewhere to drive to. But basically, yeah, you saw two failed lane changes and that was because it is pretty busy at the moment. And right now we're still following EU regulation, even though I know we're not in the EU. Stop telling me that we're out the EU. I am aware, but we still have to follow their self-driving laws at the minute. Basically, if the Tesla can't successfully pull out within five seconds, it's EU law to just stay exactly where you are. So because there were cars nearby behind and in front, it didn't feel confident to pull out. And then because five seconds had passed it just had to abort the whole thing when i do use autopilot kind of in real life not for video testing purposes i generally use it when the motorway is quieter because i find it's easier just to be driving yourself when it's busy and i've had absolutely no issues with the lane changing at all delightful little lunch there from the services it finished charging so we had to move because you get like idle fees if you stay there it ended up costing us five pounds 52 to bring it back up to 80 percent but while here i've just noticed that another model 3's pulled up and he's got the same model as me only in black but you can see that this guy's taking his aero wheel caps off so that's what my alloys look like underneath a lot of people keep suggesting that we should do the same because they think that those alloys look a lot better than the aero wheels i'm still undecided because i have scraped the aero caps a little bit and i assume that they're a lot cheaper and easier to replace than if i was to scrape the alloys and I had to get them replaced. But let me know what you think. We could maybe do that for a future video just to see what they are like under there. All right, anyway, it's time to head home so we can get back onto the motorway. And if I need to, we can try another automatic lane change as well. Okay, motorway is much quieter now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on autopilot and obviously we wanna go at least 70, it's currently 57. So as soon as this car gets past, I'm gonna initiate an auto lane change. So once again, you indicate, you nudge the wheel just to let you know that you are there. And then this time, because it's much quieter, it's pulled out no problem and it's accelerating so that we can get back up to 70 and we can get past these two vehicles. So in America, you don't have to indicate. Literally, you get on the motorway and if it's set to navigate on autopilot, 
it will literally just do all of the driving for you. It'll indicate, it'll change lanes, it'll do all that kind of thing. So what I've done there is I've clicked navigate on autopilot, which works slightly differently. So when you're using autopilot, not navigate on autopilot, you decide when you want to change lanes. But navigate on autopilot has just decided it wants me to change lanes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So what it does is it looks at all of the cars around you and if it feels like you're going too slow, it'll suggest you change lane. And if it feels like you need to move back over to the left, it'll suggest that you change lanes as well. Now I don't think this is perfect. I think a lot of the time it leaves you out in this lane too long so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, initiate a lane change myself because basically I was just sticking out when really I should have pulled back in now what navigate on autopilot also does is when it's your turning I think it does all of that for you it'll indicate and it'll slide down the slip road now we've only done this a couple of times I'm not an expert on it but I would quite like to try it see we're coming off in one mile according to the navigation so if it was me I'd probably pull into here but navigate on autopilot doesn't want to oh there we go upcoming lane change tap to cancel confirm and then all I do is indicate and I nudge the wheel and it moves for me so at the minute with EU law navigate on autopilot is the same as just using autopilot on the motorway but it'll suggest where to change lanes for you rather than it leaving it completely up to you but then when you do want to change lane it still does all that itself so we're now point two from our turning point and there's no cars behind me so I'm gonna see if it does it or not it's done it perfect it indicated it steered off and it took us down the slip road. I didn't control any of that. And now because we're no longer on the motorway, that sound signals that Navigate on Autopilot no longer works and instead we're just using regular Autopilot again. So I suppose that's a little bit of a glimpse into what Autopilot will be like in the future. Hopefully it'll be a lot closer to what it's currently like in America where it just changes lanes automatically for you. Just another quick little autopilot test. So we're on autopilot at the moment. We're heading up to some traffic lights. Currently, autopilot does not stop at traffic lights, just in case you're interested. But the road splits into going straight on and then people turning right up this traffic lights. So while we're on autopilot, I wanna see, will it stay in the right lane or will it shove me over? Because there are no lanes here. You can see that it's struggling a little bit. Um, yeah, it nailed that. It managed to navigate that little tricky area. Oh, we might see a little man. There he is! God, <laughs> see you later. So obviously there's no road markings on the actual kind of crossroads bit as well. So I'm gonna get ready to take over and we're gonna just see how autopilot does over this little bit. Yep, it was all fine. It got through it. It's always a little bit nerve wracking, but that was all absolutely fine. So I've not needed to do anything with the car from all the way back there. There we go, a nice little play with autopilot. Just to finish off, there are some speed bumps here, so I don't think it really detects speed bumps, but we have gone over it on autopilot before, and it's limited the speed, so let's see if it does that again. Yeah, so it's limited us from uh, 30 down to 20. I think that's the car just taking a safety measure because it's realized from that first speed bump that there are definitely like bumps on the road. So that's a kind of cool little feature. So if I go back onto autopilot, it's put it back onto 30 again. Uh, but we're at traffic lights. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Just a little bit of a, of a play around with lanes and autopilot generally, what kind of things it does. Uh, here's an example actually of, you can see I'm not doing anything. There's nothing behind me and it's ended up shoving me in the right lane, even though the right lane's not where I wanna be. So that was exactly what I've been trying to show off all video. For some reason, it just seems to default to the right lane, where I feel like really in the UK, it should default to the left. But autopilot is still very handy for general driving, and I'm sure it will only improve. Thank you very much for watching. We upload videos on this channel every Wednesday and Saturday, or at least that's what we aim towards. So make sure to subscribe, and if you've got anything else you wanna see us test, or any feature you want to see me go through, let me know in the comments. Thanks, I'll see you later.